So where did you grow up? Where were you born and where did uh, you Born in Miami, Florida. Um, and I grew up really, my formative years were in New York, New York City. So Brooklyn to Rockville Center, Long Island, New York. So uh, those are my formative years. You grew up in Brooklyn first. Mm -hmm. uh, till how old? I was, so pretty much from age three till uh, 11 years old. And from 11 to about 18, I was in Rockville Center. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's pretty crazy change. Yeah. Yeah. It was, and you know what, completely just an awesome, um, awesome transition though. Good people. Uh, the complete, you know, change in culture was, I think just invaluable for, for my own experiences of just like learning people and learning about life. And, yep. you know, it was really instrumental for me even getting to like, you know, just seeing the world and being able to like, you know, get to certain positions. I had a lot of like great people in my life in Rockville Center and also in Brooklyn. But you don't really remember much of Miami because you lived there to like three years old or something? Yeah, it was, yeah. So very, very briefly. I have like a few memories there. Um, but uh, funny enough, I do have some memories being there. Um, really? Yeah, yeah. And then we went up to New York and that was, uh, I remember you know, uh, you know, like I remember like the house, I remember the house that we lived in. Um, it's, it's strange that you can have memories that, that young, but I do, I do have some vivid, some vivid memories. And in Brooklyn, uh, so Flatbush, um, Flatbush was, was awesome, you know, and that's because, uh, um, in Flatbush there's a strong, like Haitian community. I mean, it's like, it's just a strong, you know, West Indies, uh, very, very multi multicultural like location. I mean, tremendous like culture there. Um, uh, and that was in Flatbush, New York. Um, and I mean, if you go there now, I mean, you can still see it, but like, you know, it's not unusual to, you know, see people from, you know, like with Dominican backgrounds, Puerto Rican, um, Jamaican. You have uh, the whole Caribbean there. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And truthfully, I mean, and the, you see like such a, you know, just not only this like melting pot, but like just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's understood that like, you know, all these things are just completely normal, you know? So that, I love that. I love yeah. that, that whole aspect about it. Like you, you got to go to this place to get like the best patties, you know, you go to this place to get the best, you know what I mean? You know, yeah, it was, yeah. it, <laughs> the best Haitian food is going to be on that spot and everyone like sort of like enjoy that aspect. I, so I, that's what I remember from New York. Was it um, also... I'm, I'm picturing you like on the, you're playing games on one of the blocks or I don't know. Oh, was yeah. it like that where people oh, were? Yeah. This oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, so, I mean, I guess probably the, one of the biggest memories I always had. So I remember as a, as a young kid, like one of the things I used to like be overjoyed for is when like firemen would come over and like they would, um, they would remove like fire hydrants you know, and it would like create this like, you know, jet stream of water and you could just go play, you know. And so like you'd, you'd, you'd see that common, you know, in a hot summer. So like people would just, you know, firefighters would come out and just like unleash these like jet streams of, of water from these fire hydrants. And so you'd see kids all over the block just come down and play. And, and, and it was fun time. It was fun time. So. so everyone, you mentioned your mom was studying already for uh, getting her residency. So yeah. this this road, you have been introduced to this road of, of health. And uh, I mean, where, where did this all begin? Where did this passion, because by the time I met you in college, it was super <laughs> clear. I mean, I'd never yeah. seen someone so yeah. determined at a certain yeah. thing and so passionate about something. It was so yeah. refreshing. Um, oh, where, man. Yeah, you were. You you were like, yeah. well, like, what's up? What's going on? Blah blah. And in two seconds, I knew like everything that you that you were so excited about. Uh, and you were constantly. You that's know, awesome to hear. Yeah, I was so. It, that's it was cool awesome. here. It was so refreshing. Yeah. My roommate, you know, Danny. Yeah. Remember my roommate, Danny? Yeah, yeah, Danny Kim. Yeah, yeah, Danny Kim. Like, from you talking about life, and then him, he's like, "Want to watch Naruto? You know, like a cartoon." <laughs> Damn it, Danny. We need to change our lives. We need to find him. 
He's like, whatever, dude. <laughs> Episode five, the best. And I'm like, oh, oh man, I love it. I, love I would it. be like, we need to. Uh, I, I got to tell you first. I'm like, really? Okay. And then we would sit and watch it. And then I'm sick <laughs> after. I got to, I got to, before, before I tell you that, before I say anything, I got to say, first of all, um, it is so awesome. You talk about refreshing. Like your view, the positivity coming from you has not changed one bit. I mean, it's always a breath of fresh air. You're probably the most oh, social, affable you. person that I've met. Oh, since I've been, uh, I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate since we're uh, can, we're since we've been the boss since we've been at university. Yeah, I would say authenticity. Your authenticity was amazing because you meet a yeah. lot of people that you can tell in their eyes they're still a bit confused. You know? Like, I'm not saying yeah. confused career-wise or whatever, but it's like trying to find an identity, trying to see like what they right. should, you know, how they should react to things. And that's normal. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a normal yeah. thing. And I'm, um, yeah. it's refreshing and I'm so happy to, to have had people like in my life that you surround yourself with that yeah. regardless if they're kind of lost, they kind of, they, they know the, they have yeah. some very strong foundation that let them be authentic. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's super helpful. Uh, but going back to the question about the, yeah, the inspiration. So in college, yes, I knew you, you already knew it. When, yeah. when did this happen? How, how? Oh, it was really young. I know that, uh, I remember the first time I, I became obsessed with nutrition, I must've been, I, I always swear I would have been like 12 years old sitting down and like just being infatuated with like the food pyramid and like trying to like really sort of embody you know, all of the, the, you know, the, the data and, 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 you know, sort of the education that, were, that was provided then, I mean, it's changed significantly since then, but. Um, I think back I then they that. said like candy was the healthiest thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was promoted you know, by like New York state. You are like. Right, what? exactly. Grains was, you know, <laughs> lying in bed with, with pretty much, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> and health organizations, but no, um, it started really young. And I think it was, you know, once you saw that there was, you know, a relationship between, you know, once you saw that there was a relationship between health and like sports, which was a significant part of my life, my upbringing, wrestling in particular, that sport was tremendous. And the wrestling coaches that I had, um, once I saw that there was parallels between those two things and that there was a huge association between success you know, and, and how, how well you focused on those, those aspects. Then I was, I was hooked, you know, and, and I, I, mean, I was hooked beforehand, but it, it, you know, it just, it just, you know, continued to build upon, you know, that, that passion. Um, when did you start and I just, con I continued to see my, you know, my performance. Was that wrestling? Yeah. When did you start wrestling? So you, at wrestling around, was, you, you were already, I wrestled. Yeah. Yeah, I already knew that I was, I was interested. And then, you know, I, I, I played football, I wrestled, and then I ran track. And I was, I was you, know, you know, you had to make weight for wrestling. I mean, wrestling was just conditioning, conditioning on top of conditioning. And then, uh, I mean, more conditioning than any other sport that I was with. And so, you know, uh, you saw. I mean, you had to make, you know, that, that's the, the, the whole aspect of getting like a young – you know, adolescent to figure out that in order for him to even step on the mat, he has to first like be, be conscious of his body composition. Wow. You know, that's huge. You know, in other sports, you just kind of go out and play, you know, you're just like, all right, I'm just going to go play. You know, sometimes weight's not even a consideration, but the first thing you, you know, in order for you to compete, you know, you have to acknowledge the fact that, Hey, you know, I've got to wrestle somebody else who's my weight. While you were doing those things, when you went to college, how did you make, I mean, was it a very clear transition of like, okay, I'm going to study this? Yeah, you know, it was, it was in the beginning because I was, when I was looking for schools to go to BU, I mean, I must have taken, you know, I don't know if you, like, how you end up choosing uh, BU, but I, I, like, I took these, like, tests, these quizzes, right? Is the only That's, one that accepted me, Then That was, like, <laughs> there's, there's, no, there's no formula to this. I'm like, what is this? Oh my god, no. I'm going. I'm like, where is it? I'm like, it's in Boston. I'm there. <laughs> Why are you I'm sure that's not the case. I'm sure that's not the case. No. Yeah, man. It, it, I took all these tests and BU, I swear to you, BU is like the number one school each and every single time. I must have taken it like four times. 
And I remember the fourth time, it was like, yeah, be you. And I was like, all right, I got to go check out this Boston University. And Wait, what do you out. mean? What do you mean that you took a test four times? And it- um, so I took a test through my guidance counselor. She was like, yeah. all right, you know, like they would, they would ask questions like how big, you know, how big of a school do you want? You know, like what's the major? Did you want to study? Do you want to be in like an urban environment? Do you want to be, do you want a campus? You know, so it's like, it must've been like, maybe, you know, anywhere from like a 20 to like a, I don't know, I can't remember, 50 question test or so, um, wow. quiz. And, and it would give you the top, top schools that you might be interested in. Ah, got you know? it. Now I get it. Uh-huh. And, and, and he kept going uh, BU. You kept up yeah, BU, NYU, Georgetown. Those are the two schools that definitely like that. But BU was, was usually like the number one or two school that, that, was, uh, that was indicated. So I went there. But, I mean, the biggest factor that played into it was the fact that they had an exercise science. At the time, they had a human physiology and exercise science uh, track for for programming and, and you know i found out like at the age i can't remember it was like 12 14 or so that you could study exercise you know once i saw that i was like all right well i'm doing that you know I mean, it's, i'm glad i didn't have to wrestle you man that's uh, <laughs> that's scary man you you know too much at such a young age uh, yeah it, wait and probably so, to a fault at that point yeah but yeah it was fun though so what i what was it about that class exercise that was, was that a very unique program compared to the other programs that were out there? Uh, I just didn't, you know, I think it was just the fact that it was offered, you know, like I, I, I just, you, just you, know, clicked. you, you saw yeah, it. Yeah. You're like, what? yeah. And yeah, exactly. And the thing about it too was, you know, at the time that I had the opportunity to be able to like pacify my parents a little bit. They were like, Oh, we want you to go to med school, med school, med school. So BU offered an opportunity to be able to study exercise science and also be pre-med at the same time too, you know? So I went in with that, you know, uh, with that goal in mind and um, it, it, it just made it, it made it that much, much easier. So like once I saw that, you know, I went in exercise science um, and then once, you know, my, my third year when I, I had a chance to go to, to Sergeant and then from there on, it was, it was awesome, you know? By the way, while you were studying this in BU, did you already have a clear track of where, like what professions and where this would lead or? Yeah, um, at the time I started, you know, they, BU was awesome in the sense that they offered like a tremendous amount of resources, you know, it's just, you just had to go take advantage. Like it wasn't one of those deals where, you know, people were just kind of like offer it. You just had to go and ask, you know, you had to be really sort of vigilant and asking. And uh, there was just, just renowned and, strength coach who ended up becoming a huge mentor for me. His name was Mike Boyle, and he was actually the strength coach for uh, Boston University at the time, uh, the Boston University hockey team. Um, but before then, um, I had an opportunity to be introduced to, just through the, the exercise science track, you know, they required you to do this internship. So I went down and, I mean, the moment I walked into, his name is Glenn Harris. He's another just big sort of influence in terms of me having that interest in, in, in strength and conditioning. I walked in there. Uh, within minutes, I'll never forget. I was like, all right, this is what I want to do, you know? Um, wow. Yeah. I mean, I walked in there, it was music blaring, people throwing weights around. Um, but not, not in the sense that it was, it was organized, you know, like there was, there was, there was like a sort process. Of, yeah. Yeah. There was purpose to the lifting. Um, it was, you know, I don't want to say for lack of a better term, military like, you know, it's not really what I want to use. Cause I don't want to give that sort of essence that, that mm-hmm. it wasn't, you know, it's not something that's like, hey, we're getting, you know, but there was, there was a goal in mind. There's a purpose in mind. Things were organized. There was, there was a thought behind, you know, the program um, and there was coaching and, uh, and I loved it. I love that aspect. I love the fact that you could create, you know, these programs um, that, that required a, a, a tremendous understanding of science, a tremendous understanding of the people and, you know, uh, the opportunity to help teach individuals how to execute um, and also learn like their bodies, you know, that, that was huge. That was, it was tremendous. I mean, from all different works too. So from with wrestling, Mike, the basketball. Just... I was going to say with Mike Boyle, he was the first mm-hmm. one in terms of interest. Uh, so it was, no, it was Glenn. It was actually Glenn Harris and Vic Brown were the two first, first two people, Glenn Harris and Vic Brown. And, and when you walked was... in, that was hockey or that was, uh, 
what's and, uh, when I walked in, it was multi sports. It was all Olympic sports. So uh, basketball, football, uh, basketball, soccer, wrestling, um, track and field, all Olympic sports. And then um, after after that internship, I had an opportunity to meet Mike. Um, but I had heard that Mike was with affiliated with BU at the time, so that was huge for me. You know? What what did they? Were there any lessons or? from that experience of being with them and once they showed you this once you realized this is something that you this is your calling this is what you want to do mm -hmm. are there certain things that still are fresh in your mind from from teachings or things that they had shared with you as as you were with yeah. them yeah yeah no there is i mean there's like the philosophy i mean a lot of you know like strength and conditioning is, is interesting in the sense that like it's um there's a lot of philosophies out there you know um and, that, and, and what's the best way, you know, I want to say best way, but, you know, what's an effective way to train your athlete, you know, and, um, and how to train groups of athletes. So that the philosophy that was instilled um, within BU um, is something that is very ingrained into how I teach athletes now. Really? You know, um, yeah, uh, progression oriented, uh, you know, focusing on movements from the ground up, um, you know, uh, an emphasis on, on Olympic lifting, uh, you know, uh, free weights, uh, you know, platform based or central um, uh, program design. It, it, a lot of those things were really sort of instilled there. Um, and even just the way the, the athletes were coached in groups, um, you know, centered on, on accountability and making sure guys, you know, uh, there are a lot of, a lot of aspects that were, that I saw from the beginning that I've are still, you know, um, that I still like to emphasize, you know, with my athletes now. Are your mentors still there? Are the coaches there? No, um, Glenn is still there. Um, uh, Mike, Mike, you know, he's, he's got his own facility, um, in, in different areas in Massachusetts. So, um, and he's, I mean, he's a big, I mean, he's a big name in, in the, in the field, you know, so a big name, you know, across the world for truthfully. Um, Glenn is, is still at BU and Vic Brown, last I heard is at Ithaca. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm all doing well. So how long was your internship? Was that the, I mean, that was the first was like, experience. Yeah, that was being there and being with them, seeing mm -hmm. everybody, understanding right. the process. Yeah, I was actually, so, uh, that was my first strength. And conditioning. It's my, it was my first exposure to really truthfully strength and conditioning, um, at the time. Um, uh, I had worked a lot in like private sector. So like just one-on-one -on -one training, personal training, which is slightly different um, than that, that environment. Um, but uh, that was the first time that I was exposed to strength conditioning. So, so you did that. Then what happened after BU? What did you do? BU, so, so then I went to, I interned. Uh, so I worked as a personal trainer. Um, I also, I worked uh, two jobs as a personal trainer. And in Boston? I also, in, in Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Boston. And then I, uh, I also interned um, with Mike, Mike Boyle, um, and, and I spent some time like learning under him, um, working um, out of his facility, which at the time was at Winchester, Massachusetts. Um, and it was like a private sector work, and it was awesome. I mean, we were working with pro guys, pro college hockey, uh, really? or pro, pro hockey, college hockey, um, and I was like uh, some NFL guys. Um, and it was my first exposure to true like private sector work. So at the time, you know, I've been working in a collegiate setting. Now it's like private sector. Um, and, you know, we got a chance to see, you know, uh, not only good coaching, um, but just awesome, like philosophy behind his, his program design and just really, really well executed, uh, you know, lifts, uh, group training, and just an awesome business plan that he had too. So it was, it was fun was fun from that standpoint and my peers the guys that I was interning with you know they were you know um, sometimes you know you find yourself like really learning a lot from those guys as well um, and they were they were truly truly you know awesome um, in, 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 in providing like good resources for me to be able to develop how so, long how long was that that was that was uh, le like half a year it was uh, pretty much um, like a spring summer um, experience so um, wow so you, I'm sure you learned a lot yeah. in a pretty short period of yeah. time and after yeah. what happened 
like after so after that ex- after that experience i remember talking to mike and i was like you know so what's this next step here you know i'm trying to figure out you know what would be the the next opportunity for me and uh he said straight up he's like you got to go to you got to go to grad school you know and if Wait, you, you want gotta go to, to where? get into the grad school grad, grad school okay. and so if you want to get into the the business of you know strength conditioning you know and and go through like any sort of reputable program you have to go to springfield college so he recommended springfield college to me and um so i i spent a year working as um i worked in new york at the time i went back to new york i started started preparing to go to grad school and uh so all the tests and everything? I'm yeah, sure. I took all my exams, all everything, and I got into Springfield um, that, the following year. Um, and uh, yeah, that was, it was awesome. After Springfield, what, uh, what happened? So Springfield, um, I get a, my advisor calls me. She says, um, you know, I've got an opportunity for you, uh, but it, it may require you to leave the Springfield program. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm just getting here. I'm doing really well within the program. I'm developing these awesome relationships. And at the time, for me, like, my focus was going to either private sector or getting into, like, basketball. Um, but she recommended that I interview with, uh, with this football program or with, you know, the NFL football program uh, within, within Buffalo. So uh, I went through the interview process and – they they selected me you know for for this uh this opportunity and so you know i had a, a huge choice to make whether you know because i wasn't done with the springfield program i was about a year into it and i still had one more year left and so you know um, it was something that i actually had discussed with my family they're very much centered on 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 finishing school and and pride themselves on education above all else and so they said you know, it's like, hey, listen, we'd like for you to focus on school, but if this is an opportunity that's not going to happen, you know, you know, that's rare, then yeah, you should take advantage of it. And so sure enough, I did. And it was time sensitive in the sense that now is the time or yeah. because they yeah, had... Yeah, there was... How, how yeah, was it work? So you're like, the door, before I can finish studying and maybe apply and there's no time nah, for it? Yeah. No, there wasn't, there wasn't any, I mean, the door for the door of opportunity within the NFL is very, it's very rare, very rare to get into the business, um, that people have the opportunity to get in the business. And, uh, you know, it's, it is time sensitive, um, you know, because, uh, every, you know, there's something that has to be done every day, um, you know, throughout the season, you know, once you get into it, you start understanding sort of the demands. And so, um, it's not something that's, that has that you can you know even if you're well prepared even if you have all if you have all these accolades it's still very very difficult to get into you know you have to someone has to know you you know as i always people basketball why were you thinking basketball uh it's just because i i had a, a passion for um uh so lumbo pelvic like hip stability like core stability and in basketball you know just because they're such larger individuals i find I found that like, you know, a lot of, there were a lot of, um, of incidents where, where like lumbar stability was, was of, of huge interest for the athlete, you know? And so I found that like, especially working with the basketball athletes, um, that, that having the opportunity to be able to understand that and train and program for it was something that I think I, I thought I was going to be, you know, particularly, uh, like interested, more interested than anything else in. Um, but you know, I, I came to realize that it's something that that's in every sport and, uh, you know, there's, there's tons more to learn. So it was, that was one of, one of the reasons why. What was the role at that point? Oh, so, uh, the role was strength and conditioning, um, assistant, uh, and pretty much, uh, assisting, you know, the strength coach with whatever duties. And, and at the time it was primarily, um, like nutrition based. So, uh, focusing on, on, on all the, you know, pretty much all the, the nutrition work. I, and, and that's the cool thing about it. Like, there's a, a strength coach by the name of Rusty Jones, who is, who worked for the Bills for a very, very long period of time. And he, uh, he really set the stage for 
like nutrition in the NFL. You know, it really sort of made it his niche um, and really sort of established a, a great culture. And he did it in Buffalo. And so they had a lot of respect for, you know, providing, uh, you know, whatever help, whatever resource you could for, for developing nutrition um, in Buffalo. And um, they gave me that role. They, 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 they let me sort of focus on that. Um, and then I was able to, I mean, they gave me full, you know, really full control over it. And, uh, you know, whatever I needed, I mean, I was able to develop from there. So it was an awesome. I feel role. like that was your, that's your sweet spot. Oh my God, man. It was I awesome. I remember in college, every time you saw me, I try to avi- avoid you in the cafeteria. <laughs> Cause I'm like, Dan's going to tell most- me that I'm eating shit. <laughs> you and most, you and most, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, hey, Dan, look, there's fruits. And you're uh, like, yeah, do you know how much sugar? <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, shit, he's right. I'm still going to eat this grape. Yeah, <laughs> hey, hey, and you know what? Many no, but you were so good. You were, yeah. I mean, I remember you, You. that's, I feel like that was something you really loved. Yeah. So this was yeah. perfect. Yeah, truthfully, really an awesome role for me. And awesome people, I mean, from, in terms of, uh, the culture there and uh you know like the family centered um organization it was just you know it was a great place to be um in terms of understanding uh like you know family and also business you know um so that was that was that was huge um you know from you know the ceo down to uh you know the ticket sales guy, you know, like everybody was, was on, on the same level and, and, and working towards a common cause. And then it, it was, there was a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of good connections there. So it was, it was an awesome experience. And you did that for how long? I did that for eight years, eight years. Wow. I was with that, with that team. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. By the way, yeah. the fact that you moved from Boston to Buffalo, that must have been another trip. Yeah. And can you? Yeah, it was. Can you give us? Can you give us a rundown of what the life looks like for someone working in strength and conditioning and in the NFL for for let's say let's take for instance for the Bills. How did that look like? What did your day look like? Um, you know, it's and season it's, it's, or off season. Yeah, you know. It, it's awesome um, because it is another world, um, you know, in terms of, I mean, from the, from the first thing is, is like the time, like when the day starts, you know, um, you know, for us, like the day begins, like you, you, we can have meetings starting around 6 a.m., you know, um, I, I mean, even early in the off season, it's not, un, it was not unusual us for to start, to start having a meeting at 5.30 a.m., you know. Um, Do people get and to so, take naps in the, at noon? <laughs> no, we, we, we go at it, man. But I have it, been it, fired it, asking that question. <laughs> uh, coach, I, I have one question, if uh, possible, uh, noon time. Uh, I, I, so, yeah, they put in – No, go on, they go put on. In, Yeah, they put in tremendous amount. I mean, strength coaches, athletic trainers, um, it is another world completely. And it's the one thing I would say – um, you know, for anyone who would be interested in getting into the field, um, it, it's something that you have to be cognizant of. It's not, it is not a nine to five. It's more like, you know, a five to seven or a five to nine, you know, um, wow. you're always on. I mean, even for, you know, for in season, I mean, coaches, athletic trainers, strength coaches, you know, um, they, they understand it. It's, it's, uh, you know, there's, there's definitely an element where, where your life is completely revolved around, around football, you know, um, and around your athletes as well. So, so and that, that's, that's the number one, the biggest thing I would say is, you know, I mean, cause I remember I, I'd, I'd leave, you know, like getting things done outside of work. I'd, I'd you know, I'd, I'd get to like the post office and I'm like, you know, it's, it's like <laughs> I have an opportunity between seven thirty and eight to like get something done, and I'd go to the post office, and they're like they're not open for another like hour. Oh. I'd be like around. I'm like, what the hell? Like, what what do people work? You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's like I'm I'm here for lunch already, and, and no one's and no one's up. But no, but it is that's that's one thing for sure. What are, um, what and are then the it's, let, let's start. What are the things that you're like? This is pretty cool. I mean, do teams, teams uh, do they have their own? 
Jets and uh, I mean, what what is that? Uh, you know, now uh, we, so we charter they, uh, the teams. Most teams charter flights. Mm-hmm. Um, that's changing now. So um, I think there is one team now that has their own uh, their own plane. Uh, it's New England. New England has their own plane now. They just recently purchased. A lot oh, of teams are playing they and lose all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they get one? Uh, yeah. By the way, so. so- I didn't know that that was an, an NBA it's common, right? I mean, there's a number of teams yeah. in the NBA that yeah. have, like, their own Jets. Right. Interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's NFL because NFL is humongous. It's yeah. such a huge enterprise. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure they're, they're, they're probably going to end up leading into that as the business grows continuously. Um, I'm thinking teams are probably going to follow along that same type of model, probably. Um, you know. Viewers have it, more wins. Yeah. More uh, Super Bowls. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm sure it's any. The thing is, is every culture is going to be different. So some people right. are going to figure out a different way, you know. Um, and it's, it, but yeah, I mean that is, you know, certainly a perk is is a travel for sure. Um, you have the well, opportunity. Charter flight is everybody in the team goes in and yep. like mm-hmm. most seats. I'm guessing because these guys are big. Yeah. I guess most seats are like the equivalent of business or f- first class. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, for sure. You 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 definitely have that. Um, uh, and, Which means and for you, that's like you have a bed. <laughs> you know, for, for us normal folk. Pretty much. I'm like, man, there's a king size bed. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's pretty cool. So that happens. Yeah. You get that's yeah. how you travel. Like when you yep. travel, yeah. do you also do the bus travel or no? Or that doesn't really. Uh, I have not. It's rare that we've done a bus travel. Um, and we, I have not experienced that um, yet. Uh, but. You know, I'm not, we haven't, I haven't had a team that's in close proximity um, for us to, to travel by bus. Um, but, but, you know, I'm sure it's not unusual, you know, for, for teams that are, you know, right down the street from one another. I can't imagine the Giants and the Jets that they face stuff that they're, they're flying from LaGuardia. So you have the comfortable transportation. Right. Food. Yeah. Food is I'm amazing. sure. It's oh, tons of food, but that's, I'm guessing, all healthy. On the plane, too, yeah. On the plane, it's, you know. Delicious. Hour after hour that they're offering, you know. And I bet you these guys have humongous appetites. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. They've got to keep the calories up. It's, it's performance eating, you know, sometimes. So. Wow. Can yeah, I eat that? Can I say that? <laughs> or it's only when Performance you- eating, exactly. You can use that one. That's, Does that's, that that's mean definitely. I have to exercise eating with the purpose. Performance? Yeah, oh, yeah. We'll work out with that question. You know it. Yeah. What's a misconception by people when they when they think of strength and conditioning, or when they think of the the sport itself and how these athletes, you know, what they do most of the most of the time of the day? Um, you know, I think uh, there might there's several. I mean, um, you know, the, one of the biggest things that I I want people to realize about some of these players though, is that they're very talented, just individuals. You know, it's, it's not, it was, it was, it's, it's very often that I get a chance and I meet these people and I'm thinking, you know, it's not just football. That's a talent for them. You know, sometimes it's, it just happens that they chose football as a talent. You know, they're like musicians. They're people like football is, is just part for, for, you know, I can't say for everybody, but football is just, sometimes it's just a part of what they do. You know, um, mm. and it's it's interesting. It's um, they chose it, um, and they're very good at it. But it certainly, doesn't necessarily mean that you know that there aren't other talents that they have. You know, like I remember one time um, or several times. You know, like you know, uh, players like going up and and having the opportunity to do like a talent show, and they're playing like music. You know, like the bass. I'm thinking to myself like, you know, where do they have all this time to be able to do these things? You know, and wow. And, and yeah. and yet, you know, you realize like, no, this is this is just part of of this individual who's who's just a talented football player who happens to be talented in football, you know, who has other talents as well. You know, there's you know another person. I mean, if you hear a story of of one particular athlete who's who's with us now, I mean, he he served as a as a ranger in the army. Uh, who's yes. this? taking classes at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, it's got a guy by the name of Al Vill- Villanueva. Um, I mean, it's just... What, what you know, we got Latino oh, yeah. now? Yeah, he's, he's, he's a Spaniard. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
So yeah, no, he, uh, yeah, talented, talented individual. So, you know, and, and, and again, it's not just relegated to him like a lot, a lot, you know, and, and what do you get the chance to do? You know, so it's, sometimes it's, you know, it, it's fun to be able to see them, you know, it's fun to see them like outside of that role. And you, you know, I, I don't think people are privy. I mean, you know, and, and right or wrong, you know, like I, you know, I get why they see them as this, like this particular image, but you know, you see them in a completely different way. They even have time to party. Like a lot of people feel uh, like. Yeah, we were talking about like, that. Oh, the crazy, no, have all this money no. and now, whatever. I don't even, now that you're telling me all these no. hours, like when do you, and, and uh, how yeah. insanely in shape they it's, have. It's, it's rare. I mean, during the off season for sure. I mean, they, they can choose, but some, you know, um, during the season, you know, it's, um, I mean, yeah, there's, there's definitely a, an opportunity to do it for sure, to go out and enjoy. And you want them to, you know, you, there's in life, you certainly have you to have a balance. For, right, right. You know, but I, I think, I think you talk about the work that goes into preparation for football. You know, people talk about how, how hard it is to win a game. Like you have to give them, you know, a lot of credit. You know, the game is, is so complex. It's so difficult. It's such a challenging sport, you know, with, with multiple, multiple talented individuals and coaches at the helm. That you know, it, the 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 sacrifices that are that are needed um, in order to be successful at the sport, you know, require you to 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 step away from that that like more often than not, you know. And so you see, you don't see, um, you know, as much of a lavish lifestyle. You see guys like James Harrison coming in the morning at five a.m., you know, or six a.m. to get his lift in, you know, and and going through and you see guys like and i'm not you know that's just recently but you know quarterbacks you know tyrod coming in early on to get his lift so he has enough time to study throughout the day you know what excites what you, you what excites you most about what you do oh man i don't know that i can answer um that in just one i think coaching has always been um the biggest passion so i get to coach at, i get to coach you know, a science and an art, you know, um, I have the opportunity to create, um, artwork, um, have individuals con connect to, in to, to, to individuals and, and also have the opportunity to be able to do something that I myself am, am very passionate about and I can constantly take part on a, you know, on a regular basis. So, um, to answer that is to, is to say, many things it's it's my love for exercise and my love for for interacting with individuals my love for coaching and teaching and educate educating individuals that's that's i think that's the, the way it's my love for being creative and producing artwork with an understanding of science how i read an article that you just wrote and mm -hmm. i thought it was fascinating of and it make it makes sense now reading it but mm -hmm. you are given a huge group of people and there is a very clear time limit. Yeah. And your objective is get them at, to the best of, of their abilities. I mean, what is the objective? What, what, what is usually the, the, the main objective? Um, it's to improve all the factors that are under the realm of both movement and performance. So whether that it's mobility, strength, um, flexibility, um, uh, whether it's uh, conditioning, cardiovascular performance, um, aerobic conditioning, anaerobic conditioning, um, all of these factors, uh, maximizing an individual's potential uh, within all of those factors. So There's only 32 of you. Right, right. That's insane, Dan. Yeah. That's incredible. Only 32 NFL teams, you're right, yeah. And only 32 dance. That's how I see it. Yeah. <laughs> There's 32 dance out there. Yeah. Um, how, what are, what are things that, so if you're talking with someone that wants to go in this particular field, one, is there any type of um, medium that you use to keep, keep up with very cool news that's related to strength and conditioning? Is there something that you prefer that you always enjoy kind of catching up with? Um. You know, there, there, are, there are resources available, um, certainly. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm going to be a little biased. Strengthcoach.com is, is run through Mike Boyle. Um, mm -hmm. And, 
you know, I'm going to throw him and kind of give him a little plug here. You know, he's obviously been a huge, huge asset for me. Um, and I want to say asset. Uh, he's been a huge inspiration for me. That's so, awesome. Strengthcoach.com? Strengthcoach.com, yeah. So it's going to provide a little bit of some information. And you know what? There's good discussion. So, you know, uh, very much it, it, he's, it, I believe there's also a Strength Coach podcast, and that's good, good information um, to help develop and talks about topics, you know, within the strength and conditioning field. So um, that that's going to be uh, an invaluable asset. But I mean, just education in general. So um, if you're going, you know, make sure to you know focus on on developing um, your understanding through through other strength coaches, uh, strength coaches, and also gaining an understanding outside the field too through master's work, you know, PhD work, uh, things of that nature. So yeah. Where 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 is the future? hold for you what's the next what's the next uh objective let's say five years from now um well um i'm actually so i'm in a phd program now so i'm hoping i'm done with my phd in five years so so after that um then uh i've got a little side business um that i'd I'd like to see kind of develop um Can, can you share what is it um so uh developed a performance tool. It's called uh, the Rattle Stick. Um, I actually have a I website. I already called. like it. I want it. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> it's called the. Uh, I've Sounds got a like I can murder someone with that thing. <laughs> you <laughs> might be able to actually. <laughs> what um, is it? I developed it um, this past uh, season. I worked with some uh, some athletes. I actually created a website with my wife on it. It's called uh, the Rattle Stick.com. And pretty much what it, it, it is is this a uh, uh, a myofascial um, or massage tool that it is one of the only tools, um, that I know of, um, that, uh, applies both compression and traction at the same time. So, um, you're talking about something that you can't even really do, you know, with your own, your own hands is compress. Well, I mean, you really, I, I guess you can compress and, and track with your hands, but with other tools is very, very difficult, you know, so you can apply compression, but you're not also getting traction at the same time um, and what does that what's the benefit for for both so uh within the field of of strength and conditioning and performance uh conditioning you know you have something what's called uh, fascia you've got um myofascia so all around your body you've got like pretty much fascia you've got um tissue that's connected to other other tissue um for lack of you know for for more sort of a general explanation muscle connected to tendon through and, and also other connective tissue. That sounds negative. All, fascia. Fascia, yeah. It, and it's all negative. It sounds like bad odor or something. <laughs> no, it's it's good. It's actually good. It's how. Oh, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's how. I have fascia. You have fascia. You've got fascia all over. You've got superficial fascia, deep fascia, um, and it's you know funny enough. It's there's a lot of research that's just being developed um, or, or or being looked at, I should say, um, regarding fascia, and it's still not well understood um but uh, we know that um there is a connective and uh an importance towards fascia it's and its ability to communicate um from the ground up you know uh, and 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 manipulating fascia has become of incredibly important uh for the improvement of movement um so there's various tools uh, techniques protocols that have been used to to sort of um, manipulate fascia, and, uh, and one of which is is stick rollers, um, uh, foam rollers, and the tool that I just created. Um, and I used it all with my athletes last year when we were uh, traveling from team to team, and they loved it. And so it's one of those things that I kind of want to see, you know, get on, you know, within. And you know, honestly, just truthfully for my for my own for my own teams too, um, guys like it. Um, and I'd like to kind of see it being more utilized within, within the industry because there's, there's truthfully a benefit to it, you know, um, that's so awesome. having the opportunity to, to be able to see it grow has, has been awesome. So. And that's rattlesnake.com? Rattlestick, right? The rattlestick.com, the okay. rattlestick.com. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I think I just sent people to another site. <laughs> yeah, probably. That's probably. <laughs> that's we probably. Going there. What I'm is gonna... it? Uh, like NR17. <laughs> uh, wait, so say it again. It's rattle. The rattlestick.com. Okay. The rattlestick.com. 